Hello, my fellow hunters. Uh, this is Hiroshi Shive of Satoshi Treasure Hunters, and this is your weekly update of what is happening with the game Satoshi Treasure. Uh, this is the update for May 11th through May 19th. Uh, we'll cover a little bit of uh, some news, some back end news, uh, what's happened with some keys, uh, coverage of the Earth Key, which currently has not yet, as of recording of today, May 19th, has not been solved. And the tiny bit of news about the latest key, the Yvonne key, which was released on May 18th. So let's get into the news. So I had tweeted to Jess Wang, who had been um, coordinating uh, through the Twitter about the mini hunt that took place uh, in New York during Consensus, which was May 14th through the 18th, I believe was the time that the, the conference was taking place. Uh, the hunt took place between May 14th and May 16th. I tweeted her and asked her, you know, if anyone had won the hunt, uh, the mini hunt, if you uh, didn't watch the mini hunt update or are unfamiliar. It was basically a scavenger hunt around Manhattan where you had to find uh, five out of ten um, ST stickers, which would allow you to have the appropriate SSS keys which allow you, uh, once you have them, to form together to get the private address for the Bitcoin prize, which was $500 in Bitcoin, and that has, in fact, been solved. So the mini hunt is part of like these little uh, games or puzzles that people can participate in as they participate in the long-term gain of the Stoshi treasure and win prizes. Uh, thus far, it's this one was $500, which is not a bad uh, dollar amount, if you will. Uh, the previous one was the egg one during the the egg hunt. If you had uh, participated in that particular hunt, uh, the team or clan, if you will, or individual that has successfully solved that particular puzzle first was able to garner the whatever dollar amount people had to purchase because there was a purchase aspect to that particular puzzle, that dollar amount would be given to them in Bitcoin. Um, <coughs> So there is that. So there's that update. The other update, which is something I've talked about a couple times through these shows, is what people will be getting through the SMS messaging. Now, if you go to, and I will, I'll show you on the website, if you go to the Satoshi Treasure main site, uh, there's two options for you, two options. You can subscribe to their email list to receive notifications, or you can receive notifications via a phone number, an SMS message. And this is what they, uh, the Satoshi Treasure uh, official Twitter account communicates to everyone. Um, we're doing some work on our SMS backend, so only email notifications until that's fixed. We'll post here to No5 Hunters when that's back up. So it was up briefly, and now it's back down, I guess, and they're modifying it. Um, last reported, there was up to 60,000 people that had registered through the subscription service. I'm not sure if that's all emails or a combination of email and phone numbers, but that's a lot of people, so I'm sure they didn't quite anticipate the volume of individuals that might be involved uh, with this treasure hunt and so they're, they're doing the necessary precautions to make sure that their stuff is right so that when they convey messages and send anything through that avenue um, is done correctly and clearly and people are, are able to have the appropriate access to that information. Also of note, um, I stated this during the mini hunt, but the Satoshi treasure site has in fact change their little avatar on Twitter um, as you can see here on the page uh, it looks like that and it's a little important I think because it allows people to know you know who is who what is what particularly when copying um, accounts is such a big deal throughout the different social media accounts it's important to know when there's changes to any aspect of a website or social media to know that there has been a change in this case uh, it's their avatar, and I will get back to that avatar when we talk about the Earth. So that's it for the updates as far as the back end um, of Satoshi's treasure. Uh, the other, other update is, um, if you're still unaware, uh, the hunted key is considered declared officially found. Uh, only one agent was found, and that key was publicly released by the group Satoshi's uh, Cypher group and they released what that key uh, to the public for anyone to know. But the other two agents, field agents two and three, uh, they were not found by anybody, and so their keys 
were returned back to the world just like this. So the Earth Key. Uh, for this episode, I'm going to show you the best method of solving this particular uh, puzzle. There's one aspect that I personally was not able to do on my own, and I haven't found the best methodology to decipher it. So I'm just going to go by the answers that have been shared publicly uh, throughout the different accounts for, for you to be aware of. But I'm going to share some tools that people keep talking either through the Telegram channel, uh, which is linked in the show notes, uh, how to particularly solve this uh, key. Uh, these tools might be useful for other keys. Uh, I'll talk about that when I talk a little bit about the Ibon key. But for now, I'm just going to do my best to demonstrate how it's possible to solve this particular key. So as you can see here, the Earth key was released 5-12-2019, and the clue is break beats on the beach. And before we get into that, I just want to show you here on the bottom, you know, you can subscribe either via email or optional the phone to receive uh, your information. And if you also were unaware, uh, you, this uh, site is both in English and in Chinese. I'm sure there will be other languages coming soon, but as you can see, they have made an effort to try to make this as um, global as possible. So let's go to breakers, break beats on the beach. So you get this clue, right? The last key was a bit of a trek for some hunters, but your help was greatly appreciated. Maybe now it's time to kick back with some tunes and relax a bit. The world is heating up all over, and it might be time for some beach time with blue skies. That said, a hunter is always hunting. So break breakers, break beats on the beach. Um, if you Google that, you got like some Facebook um, event that occurred like a couple years ago. People are searching and trying to figure out what the clue is, you know, where the clue will lead them. And then eventually Eric, um, on his uh, Twitter account, released a, a different clue, a more clear clue on how to solve this particular key. And we're going to go to that clue. So that clue, tweeted out by Eric, one of the game, game makers, stated that Little Internet, who is actually a real artist, um, has emerged from a year-long hiatus with this boomerang track. And if you click on this link, uh, eventually it will link you to a site, and then the site will link you to SoundCloud. So we're just going to skip ahead and just directly go to the artist's SoundCloud account to go to the song. So this is a little internet SoundCloud account. It's interesting, he has base four quadratic code uh, right there, as well as um, this, this right here. Uh, if you click onto his SoundCloud EarthNet demo, this is um, a song. You have Jess, Jesse Wang um, here, as well as uh, High Roller, myself making a little comment. Uh, people have uh, liked, uh, reshared, and has been played 1,388 times. So this is a particular song. Uh, you can download it from SoundCloud or you can download it from the the website that um, Eric Welser, Eric Mel Eric Meltzer had tweeted out. Um, I actually downloaded it directly from the website um, in of itself. And when you download this particular song, EarthNet Demo. I'm going to show you the song now. You get this song, EarthNet Demo. It has this artwork here, so you know you've downloaded the uh, correct song in and of itself. Um, I'm not going to play the audio um, because I'm a little concerned about the um, copyright or anything like that. But this is the song itself. Now what you need to do is you need to actually open this uh, file in a particular program and I have a link in the show notes to it in which it will allow you to see the hidden files within the song itself and so I'm going to demonstrate that. So the particular program that allows you to open up the uh, mp3 file to see the hidden information is called Sonic Visualizer. It will allow you to see the hidden information within the track. It is good for both Windows, Mac, as well as Linux. If you click on the download here, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Windows uh, 64 and 32 bit, Linux any 64, Ubuntu, and Mac. So it covers pretty much all the operating systems that are out there that you're able to utilize this particular program. So here, um, I, like I said, I've already downloaded this program. 
I've opened up the program Sonic Visualizer. So what I want to do is I want to open up the MP3 file. So I'm going to open. I have it on my desktop. Here is the track. I'm going to open it. Now if you look at this track, it just looks like a regular, like you normally see uh, wave formatted file, like if you use um, Audacity or Ocean Audio or any kind of visualized uh, MP3 file format that allows you to play on your, your desktop, you will see the file itself here, the, the song, um, any type of like music software. What we want to do is we want to transform the um, track so we can see the waveform and the, and the spectrogram form. So we want all the channels of the the Earth demo to be shown. And the spectrum form. And by doing this, what this allows us to do is it allows us to go through the track itself and actually see the, the hidden layers within the MP3 file. And as you're, you're scrolling along, you notice that there's these kind of like gaps here. And if you can see right here, in this particular gap in the file, which is um, right here, about a, I guess a minute and 41 seconds into the track, you see a QR code. Let me see if I can uh, blow that up a bit more for you to see. And I want to zoom in. And as you can see, there is a QR code hidden in the spectrum and the waveform of the track. What you want to do is you want to be able to scan this QR code. Now I tried to personally use my phone to scan the QR code, but it wasn't able to do so. And I personally am not certain how to extract the information here from this QR code. So this is the part of the step where I'm going to skip ahead to the actual solution that was publicly shared. But as you can see here, through this particular um, tool, you have this QR code here. And then there's another hidden part of the track. It's towards the end, right here, which is about 3 minutes and 48 seconds into the track. And it has a phrase. It has, it is not necessary to understand music. It is only necessary that I enjoy it. This is actually the password that you need. The QR code will take you to a website. And I will show you what that website is. And then you're going to enter this passphrase here. So let's do that. Let's go directly to the site itself. So the QR code takes you to the site that's called satoshistreasure.xyz, the quick brown fox. Once here, you enter the passphrase and decrypt. God. So once uh, the QR code is scanned, it takes you to this website, Satoshi Treasures XYZ uh, slash uh, backslash quick brown fox, all one word, lowercase. And you have to decrypt the page entering the passphrase from the other half of the MP3 file. It then takes you here which is sound waves shake every bone in your body 
and you see a shimmering object wrapped in existence in front of you, as if it was shaken out of the fold in some other dimension. It drops to the floor, a rushing nesting doll, which is highlighted. It's hard to look at, as though it's partially obscured by some kind of chaotic field. A note written in nearly illegible chicken scratch falls next to it, as the song fades out. This must have fallen into the world wrong hands. You're always more devout than I was. ESV Luke 12-2. The first three words and then the last five words. Guard what, guard what you receive jealously. So what you want to do is you want to click the Russian nesting doll and it's automatically going to uh, download a file. I've already done this, so I will show you the file. So this is the file, the quick brown fox um, dash doll and is in uh, BMP, the BIP format. And you can see there seems to be an obscure object behind what you can say is a chaotic field. Uh, and then you can see a little bit of the image. It looks like there's a rabbit here, maybe possibly a pig here, um, some characters here, I'm assuming, but I'm not, not certain, uh, Chinese characters. Looks like almost like a puzzle piece here, or maybe an exotic key. And then if you look down here, you can see the new logo for uh, Satoshi Treasures down here on the bottom. And if you kind of click around and mess around with uh, the image here, there you can see it has uh, quite a few layers. And this is the part of the Earth key that people, at least publicly, have disclosed that they are stuck on and using uh, different methodologies to try to break this file apart to get behind here, if you will, and reveal either another clue or the actual key itself. And here's a more um, clear image of this particular file. Uh, so to kind of wrap this up, uh, the official Twitter account uh, tweeted that to think hard about the nature of Madakusha dolls. Many of you are very close. Uh, this was tweeted May 15th. Madakusha dolls are basically what Russia or uh, Russian nesting dolls are. I have a link in the show notes to the, uh, the wiki page site as well as a site about Madakusha dolls if that might be able to help you gain insight on um, the nature of the dolls that might be able to help you with the clue. As far as tools that people are using, um, this one right here is called um, Image Magic. Uh, you can download it from their site. I also have a link in the show notes. It is available for pretty much all the OSs, including um, Mac, as well as Apple, the uh, iPhone, if you will. Uh, I think this is something that you can use to help kind of break down the image. It's a tool that everyone seems to be um, discussing or talking about when talking about stenography, which is the method of hiding images within images or images in audio files or video files, which is basically hiding information uh, within another object. I also have a link in the show notes about um, a program called Binwalk which is something that people have also discussed in trying to solve uh, clues. Uh, John Cantal, who was one of the first to brute, use brute force dictionary, and we'll get back to that term in a moment, uh, to, to find the first three keys, uh, talk about Ben Walkie when he was um, solving, breaking down the solves. I personally am not comfortable enough to explain what Ben Walking is, but I do have a link in the show notes to a GitHub page where you can find a bit of information and maybe you're able to figure it out. I'm still going through YouTube and reading materials to try to understand what bin walking is and what you can do with it as a tool to uh, download information, uh, change it. Basically, it's like a command line program. And if you're unfamiliar with that, um, I, I would just Google command line and Google what a terminal is and, and go from there. There's some basic one-on-one -on -one tutorials there. Um, basically, it's just a, it's how you code. It's part of the infrastructure of coding to kind of make it very simple. But again, I have a link in the show notes to that particular GitHub. And the big GitHub link I want to talk about is this one 
right here. This GitHub link is by Dominic Bricker. It's a, a Stegno toolkit. It basically lists all the different types of stenography tools out there that you can utilize to help you um, break down information. Uh, he created it for uh, a particular game that's used by hackers called Capture the Flag. Um, he has uh, platforms like Hack the Box EU. You can pre-install these popular tool tools list below and he explains their usage and how to find them as well as a demo. Um, so when people do talk about certain types of tools of uh, unlocking information and you're trying to follow along through the telegram or your whatever particular clan you're part of, uh, this is a good reference point and also you can start downloading these tools yourself and trying to figure out you know which one is the best usage for a particular clue or even just for your own personal Efficacy, if you will. So again, I have a link to that in the show notes. And lastly, this is something that was a release from the official Satoshi site. It says, uh, the first tweet was about creating word lists for dictionary tax is something of an art. And then they clarified, this says, a dictionary tax are most useful, not all, as a truly brute, brute force method, but when you're pretty sure about something and just need to make sure you've covered all your bases. Uh, who needs a dictionary tax? Uh, Satoshi's treasure key, key six, key seven. Uh, this is from Twitter handle uh, Keppels underscore JH. That was about 10 hours ago. That was actually tweeted today from the official Satoshi account. So I'm not sure which clue that is for or if this is for future clues that you should have a dictionary reference tool on hand that has all the different word usages to be able to run a program and break a particular password but I thought I should share the hint along as long as a, another hint um, I created a word list I want to say a word list but a Twitter list for the Avon key which of course because it has to deal with birds that it would deal with Twitter and these are five Twitter handles that are important in helping in solving the Avon key so I have a link in the show notes to that to where you're able to uh, find this particular clue and be able to go from there to find out more information about the clue itself or figure out where you need to go. Uh, so that's it for this particular episode. Uh, currently right now clans and groups and individuals are working on two keys, uh, the earth key and the bond key. Maybe there'll be a third key or even a mini hunt drop sometime soon this week. I'm hoping so. Uh, given that this particular treasure hunt is supposed to only last a year. I'm hoping more keys are dropped at a more exponential uh, rate so that way people can work on different keys there for their skill sets, maybe start swapping keys, uh, maybe some real world action where we have to go to locations like the first three keys or even one of these feats that they spoke about that hunters would have to do uh, will start occurring. Um, this week was a little bit better as far as communications go. Um, again, I was happy on clue day that there was another clue and another key dropped, uh, even though this one hasn't been solved. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the week brings for us uh, when I do my update about the Abon key and see if maybe by then either one of these keys have been solved or not. But until the next update uh, or the next clue drop, uh, thank you for listening and watching. Uh, this is Erosia Shai. The Satoshi Treasure Hunters, and on with the hunt.